in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. You did start put your foot into the LA club scene and you sensed something was going on because I remember, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember the, the day that you sort of had that idea that you were going to start this rock club. And you said, you know, I'm, and I'm thinking about starting it with that guy that works down at Retail Slut on Melrose. And it was, and of, of course, everybody knew the guy that worked down on the street of Melrose on Melrose was at Retail Slut was Tammy Down because right. he just, you know, he had that look. He'd just always be in the store, and you kind of like watch you when you came in. I love that and picture. That, that was a great picture of the two of you guys right there. So, what was it that you saw in the scene? that was going to eventually change the world. Did you see this before anybody else or what? And what was I, the reason to start the club? I mean, I'd love to say that I was this great visionary, but the truth of the matter is the reason that the cat house was opened as Tammy has said, and I have said for many years, the reason that we opened that club was to meet girls and get free drinks and give us all a place to hang out at. You know, I had been a club DJ and I'd been DJing at clubs like Ice. And I think the only people that I know that ever went to Ice from our scene was me, you, Tammy went once, hated it, Tommy Lee went, Izzy went, and Steve West. And that was the only uh, of us that ever went. And it was kind of like went there just kind of to, 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 to see me. You know, because we were all friends then. Like, we didn't go to ICE because we wanted to hang out at ICE. They went because, oh, Ricky's there, you know. And we knew that there would be, like, you know, the normal girls, not the, the rock girls, the normal girls that like guys with money that ignored us. So um, it well, was – We got to I, hang out in that little DJ booth, which made us seem very important. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, as much as I'd love to say, you know, I, I helped build the scene, it was like – I was just there at the right place, the right time. The cat house just happened to be there at the right time. And all of our friends ended up becoming some of the biggest bands in the world. You know, when, when, you know, Steven and Axel say, Hey, can, I know you don't let bands play, but can we play something acoustic for our record release party? And that's the first time anybody ever plays live at your club. And then they keep on asking to play back, you know, yeah. it, it's it, it, it we were lucky i was lucky because all of my friends were in bands and and you met me wanting to be in a band i wanted to be in a band too and i didn't get to be in a band so Until I, later you I did out. you ended up you ended up we're going to talk about that too but the thing is you provided the environment you you put this to you and tammy put together this this vibe of a club and and along with i think joseph was there from the beginning as a dj right since day one a lot of my music influence, uh, education, if you will, of the of the glam stuff came from Joseph because he would he had such a great knack of taking a T Rex Mark Bowen song and mixing it in with a Motley Crue song, and then then and then going straight back to Sweet, and then going you know and then putting on you know a, a Guns N' Roses song off their new album or, you know, that had just come out. So he, he really had a great way of DJing and um, you still have any contact with Joseph. I saw Joseph, Joseph did one of the cat house Hollywood podcasts, which I think was episode 13. And the only reason I remember that is I think it was the, it was better than any other episode because um, Joseph was sober through everything. So he remembers everything and Joseph you know, before Joseph played at the Cat House, when I was a club DJ, we'd go into their record store, Vinyl Fetish, and Joseph would help educate us on the stuff that was happening in England, whether it be the Bat Cave stuff or the Goth stuff or the dance stuff. So Joseph was very educated to that. And I was a damn good club DJ. But at the Cat House, I knew I needed somebody else that I didn't, that I, I mean, pretty much my instruction was to Joseph is like, play rock and roll, you mm -hmm. know, and, 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 and feel free to experiment. And that's what he did. And like the playlist that you said, if you, if you look at the very first cat house flyer, which I have right there, it says Aerosmith, T-Rex, Hanoi rocks, Motley Crue, Gene loves Jezebel. You of course. Know? It's it. like, we, we, I wanted Joseph to get, ha get crazy and do whatever he wants. And he did. There's the flyer right there. And, Grand uh, opening, Tuesday, September 23rd. Uh, 
you know, I know folks out there are thinking now, oh my God, it must have been lines around the building, this new rock club in Los Angeles. I was there. Yes, I was one of the maybe 50 people in the, how many people on the first night do you think? The second night I know was there were 59 people. And I've, I mean, I rem- I forgot most of it, but I remember the second night was 59 people. Okay. So I was I was one of those fif- proud fifty without a doubt without a doubt because I you, went you may, every single week. You may have even helped me carry stuff the very very first night. You might have been one of the very first four people in the cat house. I wouldn't doubt if you were. Do I know that there's a lot of people out there that go, well, where did it start? Where do you think the cat house got famous? And a lot of people know it as eight thirty six Highland, but the original place was right at the Beverly Center at a club called, I want to say it was called Oscars because I know the movie. Oscars. Oscars. Okay. And it was, and it was like where they filmed the movie TGIF. Thank God it's Friday with Donna Summer was filmed at Oscars. In 1977. How about that? And, And I remember you and I used to like sort of drive around in your red Camaro all around that area, going to clubs. And I think one of the clubs that we went to one time, uh, was underneath the Beverly Center. Yes. And yeah. um, uh, what was the name of the hairstylist that was always the cool dude and always, you know, he had, he had Giuseppe Franco. He had. A, <laughs> <laughs> that's right, folks. Uh, Vic, do you have a picture of Giuseppe Franco you can put up? Oh, gee, my producer Holy saying crap. No. I wouldn't know what he looks Come like. Come on. Come on, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not here talking to here to talk about Giuseppe Franco, although I do love the man. Uh, we're here with Ricky Rackman here on In the Trenches, and we are going back to get forward. I want I'm I'm going through this career path because you start off, you know, club owner, uh, club ice, cat house, club runner, I guess you would say. Um, and during that time, then I opened Bordello, up- Bordello too. Bordello was another great club that you had on, was that a Thursday night club? Yeah, Bordello was Thursdays. Bordello was, Bordello, I opened up and I said, okay, I'm not going to let any bands play at Bordello. And I want Joseph to really go all over the place. Like if you're going to play something from T-Rex, I want you to follow it by with something from, you know, Donna Summer. And then I want you to play cool and the gang and then the misfits and it, it was everything and i'm just telling you cat house was very famous for having these beautiful women and everything else bordello was without a doubt more decadent the stuff that happened at that club we just never really talked about it at bordello <laughs> bordello was just a decadent fun dance club and it was nothing but a dance club and uh i it was so much fun when you just said bordello it brought back another hundred hangovers for me right now but what was our notorious about... drink ryan roxy well it was folks if anybody wants get out your pens and papers because this was the drink that ricky and i before before ricky went uh sober and he's been <laughs> you've been sober for many many years now and i think and you know is, why this, you know this why. is the drink that probably did it this is the one that drove ricky to sobriety this drink um it was one part kalua uh, maybe one or two parts um, I- Bailey's Irish Cream. And then the topper was Bacardi 151 on the top. And you light it on fire. And voila, it's the flaming dog poo. Am I right? I don't know how we came. I don't know if <laughs> I came up with the name, if you came up with the name. But we drank a lot of flaming dog poos. Oh and my we, God. Chris, would just get hammered. And no. it, that's a horrible hangover, too. Yep. So there you go. Kids, no flaming dog poos for no. you. It's good. No. Hello, folks. Ryan Roxy here, hanging out at the Hughes and Kettner Studios. Well, it's time to give away this 25-watt Hughes and Kettner Spirit of Metal Amplifier signed by me. What do you got to do to take this home? Well, just follow and subscribe. And in the comments below, leave your name or a buddy's name that you think would get the most out of this amplifier. And you know what? With a little bit of luck, that name will be called when we do the final drawing. Enjoy the giveaway and enjoy the ride.